Adam Taxon talking with Daniel Greenfield, Sultan Kanish, about his uh, Wednesday, or no, it would have been Tuesday, August uh, 14th, 2012, column, which is called Revolutions Like Allah Devour Their Own Children. This, like all his columns, can be found at sultankanish.blogspot.com. Uh, Daniel, the, the pretty heavy duty title. I'm wondering if you can explain what you mean by that. in conflict and Muslims are eternally in conflict. There is a sense of a spreading Muslim Brotherhood, but at the same time what this article highlights is that there are plenty of eternal internal conflicts within Islam and, and among Muslims because Islam is forever driven to go to the extreme. It's forever in conflict with itself and so in a way it's always doomed to destroy itself. And you give Muslims had the numbers, they have the numbers, but they've never conquered the world. All they've really done is created more and more fractures. So when there's no infidels around, Muslims just find excuses to kill other Muslims. It's not uh, really a Dar es Salaam situation, correct? Even when there are infidels around, they turn on their own because, first of all, they're on their coast. I mean, Muslims have killed more Muslims in the war on terror than they've killed non-Muslims. Because, again, the Muslims are there. They're at hand. I mean, Al-Qaeda in Iraq has killed far, far more Muslims than they've killed non-Muslims. And uh, you make an important point here that there is not a set definition on what Islam really is. I mean, they're all beyond just Shiite and Sunni. There are a lot of smaller distinctions which can cause people to kill each other, right? Sure, it's just part of the picture. Because, first of all, it's always possible to call for reform, and by reform I mean not our version of reform. Their version of reform means going back to the bone-hard roots of the whole thing, which means there are always going to be more and more extreme groups, and each group is more extreme than the last group, and until eventually you have endless war. Now, Egypt has been in the news a lot lately, and not necessarily in a good way. And uh, can you tell us where that fits in uh, and what the future is based on, you know, the fact that they kill each other? I mean, that's what happens uh, eventually in Islamic countries. And what, what can you expect to happen in Egypt? The Muslim Brotherhood is an interesting sort of creature. What, one of the things that makes them interesting, obviously, they, obviously they are Islamic reformists in the sense of reform that I just said in the sense of going back to some savage, pure origin, but at the same time they're heavily contaminated, certainly from the perspective of a lot of Muslims, including the so-called extremists, they're contaminated heavily by Western ideas. The Muslim Brotherhood really borrowed a lot of its ideas from Western nationalism. They took in a lot of things from Nazi Germany. They've taken in things from the communists. They've taken in things from the United States. It's, what, it's one of the things that makes them so dangerous and so effective. But at the same time, it also means that they're really a foreign body in a way. Mm -hmm. And the Salafis and plenty of others do now recognize them and do recognize that there's, that there's a foreign streak to them. It's also another reason why the Saudis really, and the Gulfis, their working relationship with them is not that comfortable. And so again, each, each attempt to create this kind of ultimate Islamic terror monster also creates something in that is in a way new. And what they're battling against is newness. What they're battling against is change, but to fight change, they have to change. So this creates this paradox, which leads to constant conflict. Now, you you mentioned that uh, the Kurds fit in with all of this as well, and even I found this interesting that quite a few Kurds are actually Israelis. How come we've never heard about that? Well, they have. They need their conspiracy theories to explain how the world works, and so whenever anything happens. They blame it on Israel, the Jews. I mean, when the Muslim, when uh, some of the Egyptians were protesting outside the Saudi embassy in Cairo, they began drawing stars of David on the on the wall. When uh, when they were overthrowing, when the whole conflict between Mubarak and the, um, the so-called revolutionaries was going on again, both sides were accusing the other of uh, working for the Jews. This is this is commonplace in the region, so they have to explain when there's violence between the, with the Kurds, they have to explain that really the Kurds are actually Israelis. Hmm, of course. Uh, any final thoughts on this topic? Only that uh, there's too much of a tendency for some people to despair and to see this kind of inevitable Islamist victory. It's not inevitable. Evil tends to destroy itself, and that's very important to remember. Well, that's a very optimistic note to uh, end on. Daniel Greenfield's columns can be found at sultankanish.blogspot.com. Daniel, thanks as always.